Hello and welcome to AHN Eye Specialists. I'm Dr. Hodkin and I've been performing eye surgery here since 1994. We have a very experienced and dedicated staff and I hope you'll find this a pleasant experience. This video was made to inform you about the basics of cataracts and cataract surgery. During your exam we can talk more about your individual situation and I can answer any questions you may have. Cataract surgery happens to be the most common surgery performed in the U.S. and has an extremely high success rate. However, any medical procedure does have risk and you should not undergo this surgery unless your decreased vision is interfering with your life in some way. We'll start off with a brief description of the eye and how it relates to cataract surgery. The very front surface of the eye is called the cornea, which is clear like a watch crystal. Light coming in through the cornea is focused towards the back of the eye. In fact, the cornea does most of the focusing work of the eye. If your cornea happens to be curved more in one direction than the other, you have what is called astigmatism. In other words, most corneas are round like a basketball or the back of a soup spoon. But if your cornea is stretched more in one direction, more like a football or the back of a tablespoon, this unequal curvature blurs your vision and requires glasses or contact lenses to correct. Behind the cornea is the colored part of the eye known as the iris. The dark opening in the center of the iris is the pupil through which light enters the eye. Just like in your exam today, we use drops to dilate the pupil in preparation for surgery. If you happen to be on a medicine called Flomax or something similar, or have ever used it in the past, please make sure and let us know since Flomax can prevent the pupil from dilating properly. Flomax is used to help with prostate problems and is even used by women for bladder conditions. A poorly dilating Flomax pupil can make surgery more difficult, but if we have some warning we can prepare for it ahead of time. If you take any blood thinning medications, including aspirin, please do not stop these on account of your upcoming surgery. Since bleeding is not common with cataract surgery, stopping these medications could do more harm than good. This would obviously not be true for other types of surgery where bleeding is more of a concern. A common question also concerns artificial joints such as hips, knees, or heart valves. If you have any of these, you've probably been told that you should take an antibiotic at the time you have any surgery done. This is generally true, especially for dental work or abdominal surgery, but is not needed for eye surgery, which is considered a clean surgery. Just behind the iris is the lens of the eye. Along with the cornea, it focuses light onto the back of the eye to provide clear sight. When we are born, the lens is clear like glass, but with time it turns yellowish brown and blocks some of the light coming in. The discolored lens is called a cataract. If a cataract is not removed, eventually it turns chalk white, like commonly seen in third world countries or even older pets. At this point, the vision would be very poor. To remove a cataract, an ultrasound device called a phaco is inserted through the side of the cornea and used to break up the cataract and vacuum it away. A lens implant made of a clear flexible material is injected into the bag left behind. Once removed, cataracts cannot grow back, but months or years later, it's common for the bag holding the implant to become cloudy. Fortunately, this is easily treated with something called a YAG laser. We use the laser to create multiple small openings in the bag, which connect to form a large central clear area. The middle of the eye is filled with a jelly-like substance called vitreous. It's a protein that's similar to raw egg white. The vitreous turns partially to liquid as we age, and the solid particles floating in the liquid are seen as floaters. You may have noticed these more as the years have gone by. These floaters can be more noticeable after cataract surgery since the cataract is gone and your view is better. 
Floaters are more noticeable when looking out against a bright background, such as looking out a window on a sunny day. The very back of the eye has a light sensitive lining called the retina. The retina is just like the film in an old fashioned camera or the computer chip in a modern camera. As mentioned earlier, a clear cornea and lens is required to focus light onto the retina to produce a sharp and clear image. Sometimes, an age spot has formed on the back of the eye, a condition called macular degeneration, which blurs and distorts the central vision. Unfortunately, removing the cataract cannot reverse this retina problem, but can improve your side vision as well as the overall color vision and brightness. The retina is a delicate part of the eye and can swell after cataract surgery in some patients, especially diabetics, and this can cause blurry vision. This is called macular edema, but can usually be reversed with drops or other treatments. The problems that cataracts cause are similar to a dirty windshield in your car. The overall vision is blurred and dim, which glasses cannot improve. Patients often complain they can't see road signs very well, or that reading is more difficult. And golfers state they have trouble following the golf ball. Colors are dull, and some patients even think that their televisions need replacing. At night, halos or starbursts are seen around lights, or double vision, called ghosting, may occur. Because both eyes may have developed cataracts slowly over time, and because both cataracts may be equally advanced, it may be difficult to appreciate what you've been missing until one of them is removed. Now the power or strength of the lens implant that is placed in your eye is based on several measurements we take during your exam. Our goal is to make your distance vision as good as possible without glasses, but your body's healing response will determine the exact result. In any event, even if your distance vision ends up being perfect without glasses, you will still need glasses to see up close, such as for reading. This is because the lens implant is not capable of focusing like your natural lens was. Rarely, some folks like one eye set for distance and the other eye set for close vision, if they have done this before with contact lenses. This is called monovision and can be duplicated with lens implants. By the way, if you happen to wear contact lenses and are wearing them during today's exam or took them out just before the exam, make sure and tell the nurse. Recent wearing of contacts can throw our measurements off and we would need to repeat the measurements after you've gone without the lenses for about a week. Cataract surgery is done as an outpatient in the surgery center. You do not have to go to the hospital. We don't have to put you to sleep to do the surgery, but we do start an intravenous line and give you some light sedation, similar to other outpatient procedures. We also dilate the pupil and numb the eye with drops. Because of the IV sedation, you do need a driver the day of surgery and should not drive for 24 hours after surgery while recovering. The surgery itself takes about 20 minutes, but you will be in the building for about 3 to 4 hours total. This is because it takes time to get prepared and complete the paperwork. You are wheeled into the operating room from the preparation area and the region around your eye is cleansed and a plastic drape is placed over the eye. An oxygen tube is placed beneath the drape near your mouth and nose. A microscope is positioned over your eye and a lid spreader is used to prevent you from blinking. Cataract surgery is not painful but you may feel occasional pressure. If you do need to cough or otherwise move during surgery please warn us so that we can move the instruments away from your eye. As with any surgery, things can go wrong. The worst thing we fear is infection. If an infection occurs in your eye after surgery, it could cause you to lose vision. However, this is a very rare event, about one in a thousand, and unlikely to occur. Note that patients with certain medical conditions like diabetes, autoimmune disease, or cancer are more prone to getting infections from any type of surgery. The symptoms of an infection usually occur within a week or two of surgery and include severe pain, redness, and decreased vision. 
An emergency number is available for you to call if any of these should occur. Within a half hour after surgery, you can go home and we will see you again in a day or two for a checkup. The other eye is usually done the following week. In other words, we do surgery on one eye at a time about a week apart. The reason we usually don't operate on both eyes together is due to the risk of infection. We always want to have one eye untouched as a safety precaution. After the second eye is done and healing well, we will release you to follow up with your local glasses doctor who will fit you with new glasses. The restrictions after surgery are minimal. You can go about your normal life, just don't press or rub directly on the eye. Remember there are no sutures in the wound and direct pressure on the eye before complete healing occurs, which takes about a month or so, could open the wound. During this time, don't get any soap, water, chemicals, or dust in the eye. Some minor lifting and bending over is fine as long as it doesn't cause you to strain. Use your eye drops as directed and wear a shield at night for at least one week to prevent accidental rubbing or bumping the eye at night. We will give you a schedule for using your drops. These usually include an antibiotic to prevent infection and several other drops to help inflammation. These are important to use correctly since they will help your eye heal properly. If your optometrist sent you, chances are that he or she wishes to help care for your eyes after surgery. In that case, and if you agree, we will release you to his or her care soon after surgery when we determine that you are stable. They will follow your healing until it's time to prescribe you glasses. I think you'll find cataract surgery surprisingly easy, just like you probably heard from people you know that have had it done. Again, during your exam, we can talk about your specific situation, and you'll have a chance to ask any questions you may have.